For the final video in this chapter on cooking methods and cooking techniques, I'm going to cover a concept that's listed here in chapter 10 of On Cooking, the principles of cooking. So when we're talking about determining doneness, this is one of the hardest things that I teach students uh, in the classroom. And it there's a lot of factors that determine doneness and depending on what necessarily you're talking about. Uh, one of the things that I always try to teach my students is time is relative. So there are a lot of factors that are going to impact the time in which you cook something, the pan in which you're cooking something, the size of the and hardness of the particular vegetable. For example, if you're making mashed potatoes or baked potatoes. I can't tell you how long exactly it takes to bake a potato because there are different varieties of potatoes. There are different sizes. And so knowing and understanding what a food product looks like or what the texture is when it's done is a, goes a long way into uh, being a good cook and, and understanding cooking. I've had students uh, bake brownies. And maybe if you only have one pan of brownies or if you use an eight by eight versus a nine by 13 in the oven, what the brownie recipe calls for may or may not be enough time. And so I've had students when we were preparing brownies before pull brownies out of the oven and they didn't check them. The timer went off and they ended up being completely underdone and I had to rebake them before our catering service. So knowing and understanding each particular item or ingredient or what it looks like or what it tastes like or what the texture is, that really goes a long way as you practice your cooking and cooking skills and techniques. So <clears throat> when it comes to determining doneness here, if you look at your textbook, uh, they give the examples too of the baked potato, knowing how to check it with a fork for tenderness or a piece of stewed meat. You might even look for clear juices running from poultry or fish kind of changes color and begins to flake when it's done. The surface of a lo loaf of bread, um, you're looking at something being brown, the caramelization, the crisp crust. Um, when it comes to cake deadness, so next, uh, the very last unit in this particular course for Culinary 100, we look at how to test the doneness of a cake. A lot of people use the toothpick, but that's not the best, uh, the best way to actually look for those visual clues there. Um, in chapter two, we covered safety and sanitation. Uh, something we also talked about was temperature as far as safety and sanitation goes. So certain food items, chicken, a uh, well done, full, fully cooked chicken is 165 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's where we look, look at we've destroyed all of the salmonella or pathogens. When you're talking about the doneness of meat and uh, in in that particular chapter, when I teach about meat cookery specifically, I go a lot more in depth and detail with that. And But when, when you're looking at even like cooking a steak, so uh, a, rare to, a rare steak versus a well-done steak, there's only about 25 degree difference. So there's not really that much difference as far as like temperature goes, but it makes a huge difference in the overall texture. And so you really need to, to know and understand what something looks like and how to check it. Uh, to determine the doneness. When it looks like, uh, when you go through your, your chapter here, you also it also talks about the equipment, as I mentioned before, so the type of pan, the size of pan, uh, making sure your oven is calibrated correctly is important as well. Like that's about $10 for a little, um, little thermostat that you can put in your oven, making sure that the, the calibration of the oven is correct, that you are actually cooking and baking things at proper temperature is really important. Uh, and the last concept in vocabulary that I, I wanted to kind of go over here with the doneness, lots of foods um, continue to cook when they're removed from the heat source. So this term is called carryover cooking. Um, there is resident, um, there is heat that is built up inside of a food product. A baked potato, for example, has a lot of steam, a lot of moisture. If you've got it all wrapped up tight in foil, you take it out of the oven, that potato is going to continue to cook. It's really important that you get that potato open and you let that steam escape or you're going to end up with like glue inside of that potato and it gets really sticky and really changes the texture. Uh, something like a turkey or a very large piece of meat, especially something that has bones in it, those bones are going to be very hot. They're going to continue to cook. Um, you don't want to be like, I have, I'm not a big turkey fan, but at Thanksgiving, I kind of grew up with 
really dried up, dried up, overcooked turkey. And I realized that um, the, the people that were cooking the turkey didn't really understand that carryover concept. So they would cook the turkey 100% done in the oven and pull it out and then let it sit there. And the bones would continue to cook it until it was just way overcooked uh, and dried. And, and most meat, particularly large cuts of meat, they need resting and that resting continues that cooking process. So knowing when to pull something out and how long to rest it for and how important the resting process is and that carryover cooking and how to utilize that, those are all really important concepts that you'll get. And that comes from practice. Like you just kind of do something again and again and you learn by knowing that concept and understanding that concept, you can do something well or do something wrong and be able to look back and be like, oh, I see. I cooked it too long in the oven and I didn't rest it long enough. So timing alone, this is not, uh, time is relative. And when I first learned how to cook and I would ask how long, and my students often ask, Ms. Fuquay, how long, how long do I cook something for chef? And I always say, till it's done <laughs> or long enough, but not too long and not under too long. And they always look at me funny when I say that, but time is relative. It's more important to really kind of know and understand those visual cues, when to use a thermometer, when to utilize carryover cooking or when that's going to occur. And a lot of that really just comes from practice.